Alright, yeah. Sunday album day, and finally he's doing a zapper. And I did think, yeah, let's just do Joe's, because I looked up Sheik Your Booty too, I'll do that after this. But, yeah, this one's like two, nearly two hours long, I think. Um, More. But, yeah. It's kind of set out mad on Wikipedia, but we're going to do it the vinyl. We're going to do it in parts of the vinyl, not the CD. Um, because they are like, it's like a play. Act one, then you've got the titles. Act two, act three. But each kind of, yes, I suppose you've got acts, scenes. So we'll do it in each kind of as the vinyl would have run. So, yeah. I actually don't think we've done that many. I know Lucille has messed up my mind. I don't even think we've done Joe's Garage. Maybe a long, long, a token of my extreme we've done. Uh, Packard Goose. Have we done Keep It Greasy? Anyway. We will anyway, I suppose. But this is, yeah. So, Frank Zappa, Joe's Garage. Um... The central scrutinizer. Let's go. This is the central scrutinizer. It is my responsibility to enforce all the laws that haven't been passed yet. It is also my responsibility. Eventually lead to 
Hold on. Because this is just going to be so Zappa already. Because the music underneath that, like, that's what I was thinking. That it's probably good that I've done as much Zappa as I have before doing an album. Because you do have to understand how to listen to album, but it, uh, to listen to Zappa, but, um, to put such fire music underneath some creepy voice that's way louder than it, but you still can't make out everything it's saying. It's kind of, yeah. I just thought that's such a zapper thing to do because again the music underneath it was just fire but then you've just got this yeah kind of like um yeah this whispery voice that's louder than everything else and you can't hear it it yeah that's kind of crazy yeah crazy but now we're on to Joe's garage. Let's go. enough room to cram the drums in the corner over by the Dodge. It was a 54 with a mashed up door and a cheesy little lamp with a sign on the front said Fender Champ and a second hand guitar. It was a Stratocaster with a whammy bar. We could jam and Joe's Garage. His mama was screaming, his dad was mad We was playing the same old song in the afternoon And sometimes we would play it all night long It was all we knew and easy to So we wouldn't get it wrong All we did was bend the string like Hey, down in Joe's garage We didn't have no dope for LSD but a couple of quarts of beer Would fix it so the intonation Would not offend your ear And the same old chords Going over and over Became a symphony We could play it again and again and again Cause it sounded good to me One more time We could jam in Joe's garage Mama was screaming, turn it down We were playing the same old song In the afternoon And sometimes we were playing all night long It was all we knew and easy to So we wouldn't get it wrong Even if we played it on the saxophone We thought we was pretty good We talked about keeping the band together And we figured that we should Cause about this time we was getting the eye From the girls in the neighborhood They'd all come over and dance around like So we picked out a stupid name Had some cards printed up for a couple of bucks And we was on our way to fame Got fashion suits and beetle boots and a sign on the back of the car. And we was ready to work in a go go bar. One, two, three, four. Let's see if you got some more. People seem to like our song. They got up and danced and made a lot of noise, and it wasn't for very long. A guy from a company we can't name said we ought to take his pen And sign on the line for a real good time But he didn't tell us when These good times would be something that was really happening 
so the band broke up And it looks like We will never play again Guess you only get one chance in life To play a song that goes like That's a tune. That's a tune. So I'm guessing that this is kind of Zappa's like like the wall, how the wall is kind of the story of a rock star. I guess this is Zappa's, yeah, like Bad Company shooting star, David Bowie's Ziggy Star, but this is going to be Zappa's kind of take on the The kind of yeah, telling the story of a of a rock star. Cause pretty much what I picked from the lyrics was, yeah. He's got an amp. He's got a guitar. Everybody's in Joe's garage. Then the band breaks up. Don't think we're gonna play anymore. We used to play in Joe's garage. It's a bit summer of '69. Brian Adams, like of that kind of, yeah, telling the story. That's what I'm getting from this so far of Joe's garage. Yeah, is that it's going to be. A kind of concept story telling. Of Joe and his garage, basically. But yeah, hold on two seconds. Oh, right, I don't know why I'm starting again. But yeah, we're on Catholic Girls. Yeah, let's go. Naturally, we are hold easy.
understood why Zappa was even in the conversation for um, controversial lyrics in terms of because I've always found him to be kind of against everything but hearing this when was this album? I don't think it has actually got a date on it I mean in England really no one's going to bat, bat an eye at that really no one's going to bat an eye um, because we just don't have the same religious, yeah, vibe going on in England as you do. I know America. Like it took me ages watching American stuff. Why G? Why they say GD? I was thinking, what? What, what swear word is that? But it's goddamn. Like that's kind of crazy. Like, yeah. Uh, seventy nine. It says. Yeah, 79. Released October 29th, 1979. I tell you, you'd be deaf. Well, yeah, I'd say probably still in America today that this would upset a hell of a lot of people. Like, yeah. Hearing this, I completely get now why Zappa was kind of in the conversation and it's like, yeah, so vocal on, um, yeah, especially the religious right censoring him. But I wonder if nowadays, because nowadays everybody knows like um, the Catholic Church, 
what the Catholic Church has been up to for years. With well, more young boys than young girls, but yeah, I wonder if it it, it would be seen quite as controversial today in America. In England, is it would have never have been really. Because, like I say, we just don't have that same religious, um, yeah. But yeah, that and, and musically, that was fire. The bass, you kind of had the slap bass. All the different, how many different genres of music have we gone through at this point as well? That's another thing I want to bring up, because in that one, it was kind of that modern jazz. Type kind of Amy Winehouse type of vibe, um, a little in there. But then you had like slap bass. You've also had throughout this album, you've had like a the surfing kind of typical surfing thing. You like there's been a lot like funk at the beginning, then a kind of folky country, yeah. The amount of genres, and it does feel like, having watched live shows, it actually feels like a kind of live Zappa thing, how it's kind of going from one thing to the next. Although live, you this is stopping, do you know what I mean, on each track, really. But live, it's just one continuous, yeah. But, um, yeah, the last one on this side. Crew slut. Um, I'm feeling this might upset some people too, probably. But yeah, <laughs> let's go. Just get on the bus. <laughs> Add water, makes its own sauce. So you don't forget, call before midnight tonight. The boys and the crew are just waiting for you. And you don't need to wash it. Hey, I'll buy you a pizza. Of course, I'll introduce you to Warren. The boys and the crew are only waiting for you.
good. A lot of the boys in the crew love leather. And rubber? Yeah, they like rubber too. Shrink tubing with a hair dryer. Spot on the bench for a guy with the wrench in the <laughs> You like that, huh? I told you you'd love it. <laughs> It's a way of life. <laughs> Guys in the crew have got a present for you. A present for me? We got a present for you. Just like a Telefunk in U47. <laughs> You'll love it. With leather. <laughs> uh, well, I have to say, this side of Act One has, first, let's say, musically, I mean, just incredible. Incredible, from the funk, uh, yeah, the funk first track into that kind, of, into Joe's Garage, the title track, which yeah, definitely had a kind of reggae, but more kind of country folk, that type of vibe, um, like I say, into like a kind of, but all very very zappa. But the last two, yeah. Yeah. I see now. It's amazing, really, isn't it? I've done... I saw someone actually say something today. I don't know whether it was a comment or someone actually messaged me saying about I've done over 200 Zappa um, reactions. And it's amazing that even after 200 reactions, like more than 200 reactions, there's a side, like, I suppose saying that, no, like, you do have Bamboozled by Love, Easy Meat, um, all that type of thing. But, yeah, I feel like, not so much the last one, but the Catholic Girls one felt, very much like a direct jab. Do you know what I mean? Like a um a precision shot. Do you know what I mean? At some uh, almost kind of daring them to get like to go like to to offend them. Yeah. Which I've never kind of necessarily got from Zappa before, I don't think. But it did feel like that. It felt like, yeah, this is a shot for you. But then the next one is just... Do you know what I mean? It's not long been. It shows you how far things went. It's not long been the times where Elvis was filmed from the waist up you can kind of see why people was a bit like jesus because especially with something like this this is so ahead of its time there's a lot of hip-hop in this as well which obviously hip-hop wasn't even invented well it may have been starting to rumble around 79 like but not just the kind of explicit lyrics of it but the actual, like, the voice linking all the tracks together. Like, in hip-hop, especially when I was growing up, hip-hop, they used to have skits. It was called skits. So you'd have, like, four songs and then, like, kind of like a a couple of minutes of a of almost like a scene of a, like, whatever, of, a, of some type, like, that, like, they'll kind of act, I don't know, let's say robbing someone or... But then if you listen to Eminem, Eminem would do skits of his manager phoning him, telling him that his album's too explicit um, and he better not have a new gun and things like that. 
but you can see the Zappa is like there's a little bit of that kind of skit. Uh, well, you saw it as well, especially at the end with that him and the girl, where that is literally what I mean by a skit. That's what they would call it on a hip hop album. Yeah, if you look up most kind of, I don't know if hip hop if they do it today. But then it, yeah, yeah, you'll see it on quite a lot of old school hip hop. But you, you got to think that definitely hip hip hop was not in that point. Probably not for another twenty years. So it shows you how ahead of his time, Zappa was. With the little skits in the background, that weird, creepy voice that does seem to be the through line. Um, yeah, the narrator almost. The narrator of the album, I guess you'd say. And I suppose it works in terms that it's a play. Like, if you look at it, like they say about Shakespeare, if you read Shakespeare, like Shakespeare is not meant to be read. They're they're wrote as plays. They're meant to be performed. Um, so they're not books and they're not kind of stories in that typical way. But I think, yeah, Zappa's gone for that type of thing with this album. With the acts and, yeah, act scenes, yeah. But yeah, so far, though, this is fire, this album. And musically, like, just unreal, to be honest. Unreal. But, yeah. Yeah, we finally started an album, Zapper album, and finally started Joe's Garage. But, yeah. That's the reaction, so.